With so much hype around the draft and the players that do get drafted, it's often easy to forget that just because a player wasn't drafted doesn't mean they aren't good. Romo retired after the 2016 season, but he remains the best rookie free agent signing in Cowboys history. Every sports fan loves an inspirational underdog story. For example, a football player who turned out to be a star despite not hearing his name called on draft weekend. Let's take a trip down memory lane and look back on the best undrafted NFL player every year from 2000 to 2020. And a big shout out to Michael Baruta and everyone else who suggested this idea. We made you work for it, but you did it. You got the video you've been asking for. Thanks again, and hey, please keep sending your suggestions for a chance to get featured in our videos. 2000, Sean O'Hara. The Rutgers offensive lineman signed with the Cleveland Browns where he spent his first four seasons. However, O'Hara enjoyed his best season with the New York Giants, who he signed with in the 2004 offseason. The three-time pro bowler was a key cog in the Giants' Cinderella Super Bowl 42 championship season, where they defeated the previously undefeated New England Patriots. O'Hara also earned a second-team All-Pro selection in the 2008 season. Not half bad for a guy who was passed on several times by 31 teams, huh? 2001, Antonio Pierce. Pierce, who played nine NFL seasons, gets the nod here. The Arizona product was an impactful linebacker on both Washington and the Giants. Like O'Hara, Pierce was an integral part of the Giants' Super Bowl 42 championship team. He posted 100-plus tackles in four different seasons and earned a Pro Bowl selection in the 2006 campaign. 2002, James Harrison. The Pittsburgh Steelers had no idea at the time, but the final piece of two Super Bowl championship puzzles turned out to be an undrafted Kent State linebacker. Harrison saw very little playing time in his rookie year. He was cut several times by the Steelers, but they brought him back for a second go in 2004, and he wound up playing all 16 games that year. Harrison was on the Steelers' Super Bowl 40 championship team, but he started taking his game to another level in 2007, when he earned his first Pro Bowl selection. In 2008, Harrison racked up 16 sacks and 7 forced fumbles en route to Defensive Player of the Year honors. And of course, his legendary 100-yard pick 6 in Super Bowl 43 turned out to be a difference maker as the Steelers won their 6th Lombardi Trophy. Easily one of the all-time undrafted GOATs here. 2003, Antonio Gates. Before we get to Gates, we have to give a quick shout out to Tony Romo, who was also considered for this spot. But Gates is a lock for the Hall of Fame. You can argue that he's a top three all-time tight end. His 116 TD receptions are top for the position, and seventh all-time among all positions. What's especially amazing? Gates didn't even play college football. He was actually a basketball guy, but only gave the NFL a chance when his hopes of making the NBA were dashed. The Chargers gave Gates a look, and the rest is history. 2004, Jason Peters. It's a very tough call between Peters and Wes Welker. The latter was one of the NFL's most dynamic whiteouts during his tenure with the Patriots. But Peters' likely induction into the Hall of Fame gets him the nod here. Peters was actually a tight end in his college days at Arkansas, but he decided to make the transition to offensive linemen at the NFL level. The Buffalo Bills signed Peters in 2004, and he became a starter in his sophomore year. Fast forward a decade and a half later, and his resume is nothing short of incredible. Peters was a key part of the Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl 52 championship team. He has earned a whopping nine Pro Bowl selections, and he was named to the 2010's All-Decade Team. 2005, Cameron Wake. The Penn State product signed with the Giants in 2005, but was released before ever playing a game for them. Wake decided to head up north to the CFL, where he shined for the BC Lions. The two-time CFL All-Star became a hot NFL free agent in 2009. He ultimately signed a multi-year deal with the Miami Dolphins, and boy, what a bargain that was. Wake was one of the NFL's most prolific pass rushers of the last decade. The five-time pro bowler hit double-digit sacks five times, and he recorded at least seven in eight different seasons. Wake reached the 100-career sack mark during the 2019 campaign as a member of the Tennessee Titans. 2006, Brent Grimes. 
Before we get to Grimes, quick shout outs to former Packer star and Super Bowl 45 champion Tremon Williams and stud defensive lineman Donald Penn. Those two also surpassed expectations as undrafted free agents. As for Grimes, he signed with the Atlanta Falcons but didn't play at all in 2006, and he only saw two games in 2007. He finally became a starter in 2008, and so began his run as a star cornerback. Grimes was one of the NFL's top lockdown corners during his 10 years with Atlanta and the Miami Dolphins. He helped the Falcons turn a corner in the Matt Ryan era, taking them to the postseason in 2008 and 2010. Grimes finished his career with 140 pass defenses and 33 picks. 2007, Pierre Thomas. Thomas shined as a running back at Illinois, but his production wasn't good enough for any of the 32 teams to justify using a draft pick on him. Well, the New Orleans Saints saw something in Thomas and gave him an opportunity in 2007. He turned out to be a solid backup running back in New Orleans, dazzling as both a rusher and pass catcher out on the backfield. Thomas had 1,095 total yards and 8 touchdowns in the Saints' 2009 Super Bowl championship season. He even caught a touchdown in the big game against the Indianapolis Colts. 2008, Mike Tolbert. This was our toughest call. Marcel Reese, Wesley Woodyard, Danny Woodhead, Danny Amendola, and Jarrell Freeman were also considered, but we ultimately had to go with Tolbert. Tolbert was one of the NFL's few productive fullbacks in an era where the position is almost extinct. He was a stud on a 2009 Chargers team that won the division. He was an excellent fit in Cam Newton's offense with the Carolina Panthers, helping the team to a Super Bowl 50 appearance and three division titles. 2009, Arian Foster. Coin flip between Foster and Michael Bennett, but we can't forget how dominant the former was during his tenure with the Houston Texans. Foster saw a little playing time in his 2009 rookie year after signing with the Texans, but in year two, Foster became a household name. He led the league in both rushing yards with 1,616 and rushing TDs with 16. He finished with four Pro Bowl selections in what turned out to be a rather spectacular career. 2010, Victor Cruz. Cruz signed with the Giants after the 2010 draft, but he was unfortunately limited to three games in his rookie year because of an injury. Like Foster, Cruz broke out in year two, his first full NFL season. Cruz and Hakeem Nix formed a dynamic receiving duo. The former caught 82 passes for 1,536 yards and nine touchdowns. This included a 99-yard touchdown in Week 16 against the New York Jets, tied for the longest touchdown catch ever. Cruz helped the Giants defeat the Patriots in Super Bowl 46, and he even caught a touchdown in the big game. 2011, Chris Harris Jr. Harris signed with the Denver Broncos late in the 2011 offseason, and he narrowly made the final roster. He saw limited playing time in his rookie year, but became a starter in 2012 and Harris gradually developed into one of the league's elite slot corners. Harris broke out in 2014 when he notched 17 passes defended and three picks, earning Pro Bowl and second team All-Pro honors. A year later, he led the Broncos a no-fly zone secondary that propelled the team to a Super Bowl 50 championship. 2012, Justin Tucker. After Billy Cundiff's unforgettable field goal miss in the waning seconds of the 2011 AFC Championship game, the Ravens decided to bring in competition. They signed Texas kicker Justin Tucker one month after the draft, and it turned out to be a franchise-changing move. Tucker won the starting job over Cundiff and became Mr. Clutch, helping the Ravens to a Super Bowl 47 title in his rookie year. He's also the most accurate kicker in NFL history. 2013, Adam Thielen. The Minnesota native signed with his home state team in 2013. However, Thielen didn't become a starter until 2016, having seen limited playing time in each of his previous two seasons. When Thielen got the starting job, he relished the opportunity. Thielen is now one of the game's most dominant receivers, an incredible story given how he was undrafted and had to wait three years to finally get his chance to shine. 2014, Shaquille Barrett. John Elway and the Broncos hit another undrafted free agent home run when they signed Barrett in 2014. He didn't play that year, but Barrett impressed enough to land a starting role in the 2015 campaign. Barrett's efforts helped the Broncos to the league's best defense in 2015, and it guided them to a Super Bowl title. Barrett, of course, took his game to another level after signing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2019. That year, he led the NFL with 19.5 sacks. He followed it up with eight sacks in 2020 helping the Bucks win the Super Bowl while adding another ring to his personal collection. 2015, Anthony Harris. 
Harris saw limited playing time over his first three NFL seasons. He finally became a starter in 2018, and sure enough, his production began to take off from there. Harris broke out for the Vikings in 2019 forming an elite duo alongside fellow Pro Bowl safety Harrison Smith. That year, Harris recorded six picks, which was tied for the league lead. Harris had another solid season for the Vikings in 2020, and it landed him a one-year $4 million pack with Philadelphia in 2021 free agency. 2016 Robbie Anderson, Will Lutz, and Corey Littleton were also considered here, but Anderson has grown into a very productive wideout, so we had to go with him. Anderson signed with the Jets in 2016, and despite lackluster quarterback play, he was able to develop into one of the NFL's elite deep threats. Anderson's speed makes him one of the most difficult covers in the league, and he took his game to another level after signing with Carolina in 2020. 2017, Austin Eckler. This was a stacked undrafted class. In addition to Eckler, you have Taysom Hill, Tim Patrick, Young Way Koo, Matt Frieda, Zach Pascal, Nick Mullins, and Corey Clement, among others. But we had to give props to the Chargers workhorse running back who's an annual threat for 1,000 yards from scrimmage. Remember when he had 1,550 yards and 11 touchdowns alone in 2019? He can be on my team any day. 2018, JC Jackson. Jackson has quietly been one of the NFL's top shutdown corners since signing with the Patriots in 2018. He was on their Super Bowl 53 championship team, forming a stingy secondary with the likes of the McCourty twins and Stephon Gilmore. Through his first three seasons, the ball hawking specialist had 17 picks and 30 passes defended. Just another case of Bill Belichick finding a hidden gem. 2019, Deontay Harris. There are only so many quality special teams returners in this era, thanks to the new kickoff rules and such. But the Saints standout has been a special weapon for Sean Payton and company. Harris led the NFL in punt return yards during the 2019 season with 338, earning Pro Bowl and First Team All-Pro nods. The Saints have themselves a serious return threat, and it didn't even cost them a draft pick. 2020, James Robinson. For at least one year, Robinson was the gold standard for 2020 undrafted free agents. On a one-win Jacksonville Jaguars team, Robinson racked up 1,070 rushing yards, 7 TDs, and 49 catches for 344 yards and 3 receiving scores. Someone will likely unseat Robinson here as he'll become the Jags backup behind 2021 first-round pick Travis Etienne. But for now, Robinson is still the man to beat when it comes to 2020 undrafted free agents. Who do you think is the best undrafted player in the NFL right now? Join us in the comments section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.